I see a lot of complaints in the game and on the forums and on Discord that there are too many noobs out there or new players who just don't know how to play certain tanks. So that got me thinking, maybe we should look at doing a driving school. So that's what this is. This is part one in my series and it's going to focus on tank destroyers, primarily the lower orders from one all the way up to six. Now I'm not going to go through every single one, but we're going to look at the basics. <laughs> Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz and as I said in the intro this is part of my driving school series and this is part one tank destroyers. Now we're only going to be looking at the basics and I'm only going to focus on primarily the lower tiers that's tiers one through to six. Now I'm not going to go into every single tank destroyer this is not a tank destroyer tank review this is get into grips with different tank destroyers. Now, they come in all shapes and sizes, from flat ones like the Stug and the SU-100, as you see here, which have different attributes, to open top ones like the Toaster, the, uh, the Panzer IV, and even the Nashorn, and to an extent the SA-35CA. We then have big, massive, bulky ones like the SU-100Y, which is a colossal tank to a flat, bulky one, like the Churchill gun carrier, the British TD. We then stay on the British line, we have ones that are very heavily armoured, but have really rubbish damage, like the 82, the 87, and the 88, for example. We then have ones, like the American line, that T-67 here, and the Wolverine next, that are based on other tanks. The, the Wolverine is actually based on a Sherman chassis, and they have turrets that move, now, majority of TDs have static turrets or fixed turrets, but some of them, as you've just seen there, have turrets that do move. So, the first tip in playing a TD, and this applies to all TDs, regardless of what they are, is find a good position. You are primarily a sniper, and like all good snipers, you stay and you relocate. Don't stay in the same spot for, you know, forever in a day you will get seen and you will get wasted because as soon as you fire that gun it's like raising a flag so the idea of sniping is find a good position shoot and then relocate now i've decided to relocate now because they're all coming around the corner same with the wolverine i've gone around the corner here I, i've not been seen yet i'm going to snipe take a shot onto the toaster I've now been spotted, so I'm going to relocate, and I'm anticipating where that wall, where that uh, pattern is going to be. I've reset my camo, thinking he's still up there. No, he's not. So I can now see him. He's coming round the side. So I'm going to relocate all the way round and try my hardest to catch him out. Now I can see he is coming over the top, so I can stick one into him. I'm then going to let him ram me to take even more damage. Load a bit of HE and voila, Bob's your uncle, so to speak. Now the thing you need to understand about TDs, why you need to relocate, is they're really, really, really thin-skinned. Unless, of course, you're driving one of the thicker armoured uh, British line of TDs. Generally, they are very thin. This is why you need to find a good position. Because if you get up close and personal, you're going to get penetrated. Fixed turret TDs, their strongest armour is at the front, but that comes at a major disadvantage because everywhere else you're weak, especially round the back. Now the reason why they have these fixed turrets is because they're meant to be snipers. They are meant to be low silhouetted, which is like the Stug, it's like the Jag Panzer IV, and it's also like the SU-100. They are low silhouettes. They are meant to be in a good sniping position, laying fire down. So it's important you find a good spot. There is no point you thinking that because you're in a tank that has a good gun, that you are going to be effective on the front line. You will not be. 
In fact, you will be back in the garage before you even realise what has gone on. Now a lot of people will shout at you, they'll call you a camper and all these sort of things, but you are a TD, you are a support tank, and as you can see here, in this position, I am holding off two tanks. I've already taken one tank out with the assistance of another team member, so we're keeping three tanks. That's just, that's like 50% of their team now, because if you look, they've only got five tanks left. So we are holding 50% of their team in this position. It's a simple fact. Now, however, I've been spotted, so like all good snipers, you relocate. And I can't emphasize that enough. There is no point you just sitting there trying to pop shots because once you're seen, they know where you are. Now, once you've relocated, you can still get into good positions. So here I am, because I'm a low silhouetted tank, I can sit here and take out the KV-1. Not a problem. And, you know, I've he didn't have a chance and that is the thing about finding a good spot this is the toaster now the toaster has pretty weak armor so you need to know where on the map you need to be now i can see on the mini map generally where all the reds are so i'm finding a nice position behind this rock so the reds to the right of me can't take me out i've been spotted take one more shot quickly get out of there because those two tanks, those three tanks, sorry, over there know where I am. So I'm going to roll this way behind this big rock here and try and get some shots in. Come round the corner. Because it's a fixed turreted TD, you've got no traverse whatsoever, which is why I just got a shed load of AP into me. We actually win this game in the end because I play it a bit more sensibly now. Um, you'll also see with these fixed guns that if you're behind a rock like that it's very difficult to get the gun around because the the side traverse is really pants now however he's focused on something else I've already put shots into the Matilda he's gone not due to me but due to my assistance this allows me to focus on the KV-1 and support my teammate down there who's in the S35 CA and voila there goes the KV-1. Now, also, whilst you've got a good position, which is great, you should also be shooting from distance. These tanks have big guns for a reason, because they are really effective at shooting things from range. So they're at, what, 520 meters away, and I'm putting great shots into that Panzer IV. I've just taken a massive shot out of him. I've already done 247 damage. I've got a Type 58 coming up, trying to get after our Type 58. There's the Panzer IV again, he's just not popping. That Panzer, that Type 58, sorry, is almost 300 meters away. If he pops around that corner, then he's gonna be in a world of pain, and there he is. Now he is 300 meters away. Shot number one. And I'm just able, you can't see me, I'm too far away. His view range is not anywhere near where I am. So I can shoot him with impunity. And I'm in a Nazhorn here, so I've got really, really thinnish armor. So far, I have done 1,148 damage. Which is basically, I'm going to, uh, it was the Panzer IV, and now that is a complete destruction. Because I'm sat at distance, and I'm just popping shots off because the gun is effective and that's the thing with TDs guys okay again I can be called a camper but in TDs you're expected to camp for example some TDs you will run with a camo net now a camo net is no good if you move and you're not stationary for three seconds so you expect it to camp to an extent. But the thing is, you've got to find that spot. Like I said at point one, for you to camp effectively, you've got to find a good spot. Now, I'm again camping here in a good spot. I, I'm, I'm completely unseen and I'm sniping from distance. They uh, cannot see me, their view range isn't that good. I am able to rain shells onto that Type 34, sorry, T-34, from quite a distance away, and there's nothing you can do about it. Same goes with the Hetzer. I'm able to put shots into the Hetzer. We're whittling down their hit points. 
and there's a B1, same again, because he doesn't know where I am. He has no idea that I'm shooting from here. So he's just going right in front of my crosshairs. And this is what you need to do. Now, people can shout camper, 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 but I've taken hit points away from the other team. Now, there are three tanks there. Actually, there are four tanks there. Um, because there's also a TD over there that's not popped, but we saw it. There he is, there, look. So we had two TDs. We had the Etzer, we had the SU, we got a B1, and we had a T34. We've dished out 1,500 damage from this. Now we're spotted, gotta relocate because you're gonna get hurt. So don't just camp. This is my third tip. There's only one tank left. I have saved all my hit points. That one tank is the last tank in the bag. And all my other tanks in my team are the other way. So now I'm gonna utilize my hit points. I know he is gonna take at least three shots to kill me. I'm gonna take two to kill him. So it now makes sense for me to move in for the kill. And there we go, game over. We took quite a few kills. We dished quite a lot of damage. We get a second class there. What more do you want? This is how you should be looking. Same goes in the Stug game we had earlier. Saved all my hit points. There's two tanks left. I know the other tank's being dealt with by my teammates. I can go straight in into this uh, KV-1 and really give him a hard time because I'm a low silhouetted tank. He's having to hit the top of my turret. I know I can do a fair hit point trade here. I'm going to kill him before he kills me. And there you go. Same, same goes with the Nashorn. There's a Crusader. Take him out first. Saved all my hit points. One tank left. That one tank left, however, is a KV-2, which is a pretty formidable tank. So you can't just go yolloing in because a KV-2 is going to waste you. So you have to know what tanks can do what. I know I'm primarily a one-shot on a high roll HE on a KV-2. And I also know that the KV-2 is a two-shot to me if I get really high rolls when he's only on 760. He's fired. There's shot number one. There comes shot number two because I can load and he's gone. I didn't lose a single hit point. Same, same again. Now in front of me there is an SU-100. I'm in the stug from the game earlier. Look at that. Get right behind this SU. He doesn't have a hope in house chance. I've saved all my hit points. I can get right behind him and I can put in so many shots. He's hurt me because basically I rammed him and hurt myself. He hasn't got a hope. He, he just hasn't got a chance here because all I've got to do is turn this gun into him and there he goes. It's the end of the game for that man. Because we're able to use the mobility and use the hit points that we've saved. Next up, you need to know your tank. You need to play your tank to its strengths and not its weaknesses. Now, I know the weakness on this tank is it doesn't dish out high damage. But I also know that its strengths are it has a very fast reload and absolutely amazing armor. Now, you just watch the bounce count in the top corner because you will just see bounce okay every now and then one will pen but you will see bounce after bounce after bounce i am tying up almost the entire red team here unfortunately we lose this game because despite me telling the the team what i was doing and they just didn't realize that i was literally absorbing every single shot from almost every single red team player and all they had to do was farm the damage that's all they had to do but they just didn't understand that it just went completely wrong but as you can see i'm already over a thousand i'm already over a thousand bounces i've dished out what a hundred something damage myself nothing and keep watching it because it's just going to go up and up and up and now the reds have worked out that my other that my teammates aren't going to come in for the kills so they've made past me completely ignore me because they know i can't hurt them as much as the, they can hurt me so they, they've just moved past me, which is very good play by the Reds. Now, I've got a Wolverine over in the corner. He's trying to put shots into the, the Capola. He's not succeeding, so I'm now able to put shots into him. I'm still bouncing from the left-hand side, as you can see there. We're still bouncing, and we're still bouncing. And these are big bounces. 
I mean, that's a massive bounce. Look, bounce after bounce after bounce. So you need to know your tank. You need to know what it's capable of doing. And it's capable of doing this in this particular tank. Just unfortunate that the team let me down. Um, I'm not going to show the whole of this. I mean, I get wasted in a minute anyway. But I do over 2,000 bounces. We block over 2,000 which is more than the tank, that's double the tank. I've just basically put three of these tanks almost on the battlefield when you absorb that much. And it's just a damn shame that it went to waste. Here I go, 2,500 damage blocked. I mean, that's just crazy. But this is what you have to learn. You have to, it, it, it ends up at almost 3,000 damage. And that is a crazy amount. Next, be aware of your surroundings you need to avoid being circled to death. Biggest weak point on any fixed turret TD is its rear. The front is generally heavily armored, especially the mantlet. The rear, therefore, is a big sacrifice. There is generally zero armor on the rear and the side of a TD. So, need to know your surroundings. I've put myself here right on the corner of this building for a reason. This M4 is a lot more mobile than me, but he is now going to find it a real pain to try and do what's called a circle of death. Watch me go back here. I go back, turn slightly, he can't get behind me. Now I'm going to push him forward. I'm still going to turn and he can't get behind me. He's having a nightmare. He gets a good shot in there. Now I'm going to not go straight back. I'm going to force him. Look, he can't do it and he still can't get behind me, try as he might. And at the end of the day, we get to the point whereby we use the building to its maximum advantage for our tank. We avoided being circled to death. And then we pull it all together. Now this is me rolling out in the T67. Now it's not a mastery or any massive game like that. This is just pulling everything we've just learned together. So first and foremost, we're going to find a good spot. So this is basically a, it's a non-fixed turret TD. It's based on a medium light chassis. So it's very mobile. It's got a relatively decent gun. So if I stick it here, I'm hauled down. He can't really get to me. I can try and get shots in. Unfortunately, I miss. Back behind the rock because I've taken a shot. I don't want to be spotted. Nope, he's fallen off the view range now. However, I can see on the mini-map that they're all over by the base. So I'm going to now skirt around here, down this little dip, because I know over on this right-hand side, there's a little ridge that you can stick yourself behind when you're in a tank with, like this, with a turret that moves. And there we go. We can now get shots in on that SU over there. Back behind here, stick the turret out, I'm facing the, uh, the biggest part of the armor towards the tank, keeping everything else protected. I found a great spot, and if you notice, every time I shoot, I relocate. Shoot, then relocate. And it, look, the SU's not even looking at me, and I'm getting to put shots in. Unfortunately, I don't relocate enough here, because I don't reset the camo, and he manages to get a shot away, but not to me. We've taken out the tank. We've still got some spotted up there, but unfortunately they're behind stuff so we can't get to them. So, I know there's another T-34 over the other side, to the right. There he is there, a Type 54 and a Stug. Now, I'm primarily going to aim for the Stug, not the Type 54. Because, well, the Stug's gone. Don't need the Stug anymore. So now I'm going to aim for the Type 54. Now I'm going to use the mobility and the hit points I have saved to try and take him out. So, here we go. I anticipate where he's going to be. He's focused on somebody else. I am therefore able to get into a good position. And now I'm going to use my hit points to circle him to death. So now this is a role reversal. This is a TD circling to death, a medium tank. And we finally win this game. And I get a nice second class for my troubles, which was nice. Guys, these are the TD basics. Find a good spot and remember to relocate shoot from a distance don't just camp and use those saved hit points 
Know your tank's strengths and its weaknesses and be aware of your surroundings and avoid being circled. Now I believe that these five tips apply to every single type of TD regardless. If you utilize these five tips, then you will have more success in driving a TD. I'm not gonna guarantee you'll win more games, you'll just be more successful in the TD. So until the next time guys, which will be Advanced Tactics Part 2 of the Driving School series on TDs, please, by all means, send your replays to the usual address, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. Subscribe if you haven't already, it costs you nothing. And until then, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that's what it's all about.